brother is bigger than your brother my brother is strong my brother is alpha and omega my brother is beginning and end my brother is first and last he is lily of the valley he is Friday morning star his name is Jesus and he is the lion of the tribe of Judah if you believe it say it can you imagine being raised I know I know the first public miracle that Jesus ever does is he turns water into wine but that's his first public miracle how did Mary know that he could turn water that he could even make wine I submit to you ladies and gentlemen that he had been doing some miracles at home Can you imagine? Hey, Jesus, it's raining outside. And we want to play. <laughs> Can you work on that? <laughs> what, a, what a concept to have Jesus as your big brother. But theologically, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he really is your big brother. Uh, uh, uh. He, he's the first fruits of them that were dead he is savior and the lord but he also has become my kinsman redeemer he also has become my big brother he's the first fruits of the dead and i don't have to walk around with my head down low i don't have to walk around in fear i'm not worried about any witch or any warlock i'm not worried about any curse or any pestilence because all i've got to do is call on my big brother jesus and he will fight for me he will stand for me he will war for me he is my big brother if you believe it say it James. See, James is significant. He, he's called James the just. Uh, he's called James the less. He, see, James is not converted with the rest of the disciples. Uh, I love James because James is so much of Jesus' brother. Uh, he's so much of Jesus' brother that he doesn't get it until after the resurrection. Because sometimes people can know you. They know you in your normality. That, that they can miss how spectacular you really are. They are cursed with familiarity. And they know you say so familiar with you. That, that James had a hard time accepting and receiving. That his big brother who he knew was doing miracles. His big brother who he knew was the greatest orator the world would ever see. That his big brother who he knew all of these things. But he never really ascertained that he was king of king he never really got it that he that he was the one that he was the Mashiach the Christos the one that was prophesied by all of the the council of the prophets he didn't get it he didn't understand it until somewhere in first Corinthians chapter number 15 then then after Jesus is crucified he appears to James can you see Jesus nail scarred and He comes to James. When I get to heaven, I'm going to play that tape back. Because I want to hear this conversation. What did the resurrected Jesus say to the disbelieving James? Yo, bruh. <laughs> How you like me now? I mean, what did he say to him? Did, 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 did he sneak up on, I mean, they're, they're brothers, they're brothers, and Jesus has a sense of humor. Did he just, be, did he just beam into James' workshop? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm back. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is one of the, the secrets of the Bible. All we know is that according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that he appeared unto James, and it was at that moment when he saw Jesus, the resurrected Christ, that his life was changed. 
It was not the miracles. It was not the sermons. It was not the signs. It was not the testimony of other people that converted James. It was when he saw Jesus for himself. There's something about when you have an encounter with Jesus for yourself. Not your mama. Not your daddy. Not your cousin. Not the preacher. But when you've seen him yourself, can nobody talk you out of that when you've had an encounter with Jesus? When it's real, real, real to you, there's no devil in hell. There is no cultural context. There is no cultural conflict that can talk you out of what you believe. All you need is one touch of the real Jesus and the real Jesus will change your life forever. Say amen, somebody. It wasn't his miracles. It wasn't the testimonies. It was seeing Jesus himself. An honest encounter with Jesus. He leaves us no record of it, although he writes an epistle. He tells us nothing about it. It is so intimate and so life-changing that it changes James' life forever. He will live for the cause of Christ until he is martyred in somewhere between 62 AD and 69 AD, depending on who you believe, Josephus or Clement. He, he dies. He dies for the cause of Christ. He so much becomes a believer that he lives a life that is so blameless among the Hebrew that even though they want to kill him, He's too good to be messed with. Although he is a recipient of grace, he does not take grace for granted because he remembers the day when he had an encounter with Christ and his life was changed. Grace is not a license to sin. Grace is a license to live live a life that is holy and acceptable and pleasing unto God. James the just baby. They called him camel need James because he, play, he prayed so much and so long that he wore his knees down in prayer. He wore no clothes. He had one cloak. He wore one cloak his whole life. He took no wine. He ate no meat. He prayed and fed the hungry because one encounter with Jesus can so utterly change the who that you are that people don't even realize who you used to be. You might have been this and you might have been that but I met Jesus at the rim and my life is changed forever. If any man be in Christ he is a new creation. All things are washed away. And behold, he has become new. There is a transformation that comes from one encounter with Jesus. One real encounter can turn a drug dealer into a hope dealer. Shake out of the one encounter with Christ can turn an addicted teenager into a teenager that is no longer addicted to substances but is addicted to the presence of God. One encounter with Christ can cause a gang member to lay down his bandana and put his colors down and pick up the bloodstained banner and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. One encounter with Christ can change a high school, can change a middle school, can change a campus, can change a university, can change a generation, can change a nation, can change a world. All we need is one encounter with the resurrected Christ. And the whole world can be changed. James, 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 James met Jesus and was changed. He was changing 2,000 years ago people's lives. Guess what? He's still changing lives today. 
if you're in this building, if you're watching by internet, if you're watching by television, wherever you are, he'll meet you at the point of your need. He'll come to you. He'll show you his scars because nobody wants a leader. Nobody wants a healer who has never been wounded. It is the wounds that declare to us that though death touched him, death could not take him out. He is grace and he is great and he is powerful and if he took the cross for you and for me the least we could do is live for him forever James James the just James the last James the brother of our Lord he becomes the bishop of bishops he becomes the pastor of the church in Jerusalem he becomes ooh, a pillar in the church when you really have an encounter with Jesus, no one has to talk you into coming to church. In fact, you'll beat people there. You don't need, we've had some of the best worship leaders in the world here. Oh my God, Glendale, and Jack, awesome, just great. Eddie, Jack, just everybody, everybody can sing and play. It's wonderful, but maybe they're not in your youth group at home. And, and you're saying, well, if we had a youth group, if we had a youth group, like, like they have at the ramp, we'd really have a movie. Ah, I don't care if it's a spider monkey with a ukulele. There ought to be enough hallelujah on the inside of you that you don't care who's preaching and you don't care who's singing he's been so good to me I can praise him anywhere all by myself I need about a hundred people to jump on your feet and give God a crazy praise right there hold on hold on I'm not just y'all better come get me Sit down, let me finish teaching. James, I'm looking for a clock. James, 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 James. James is changed. His name in the original Hebrew, it, it can be also, it's really, it's Yaqub, it's, it's Jacob. And he's a picture of the New Testament Jacob. The first, the Old Testament Jacob is a type and a shadow of New Testament James. Because he was one person until he was touched by Jesus. But when he was touched, he became somebody else. Another man. There's something happens when Jesus touches you. There's a lot of people who will preach about what happened when they touched Jesus. But there's something else that happens when he touches you. When he reaches in to your identity and changes you. You'll never be the same. No high is better than the most high. No rock is stronger than the rock of ages uh, no house is greater than the house of our God and our king better is one day in his cause one day in his house than a thousand somewhere else James he writes to us about Abraham and he says something that just blew my mind. This, this, this took me out. This just took me out. I just, I just had to sit. I was read on the airplane. You ever been on the airplane and you, you read something in the Bible? I, I read the Bible on the airplane. Because when you read the Bible, people leave you alone. <laughs> it is better than an iPhone, and your pad. You just, you just pull out your Bible. Pull out a big old King James. People will not talk to you. They don't bother me at all. Because they think I'm going to preach to them. I don't, I'm not, I'm not yeah, yeah, hey, but, bam. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was reading that on the plane, and, and James, because it's significant that James wrote this. It's significant that, yes, it is the inspired word of God, and it's written by the finger of God, but God uses the hands of man to move across the pages of Scripture. He moved upon them by the Holy Spirit, and they wrote from their own perspective. And, and he says he references Abraham, but inside of Abraham's story, you hear the testimony of James. He says, Abraham believed God. 
and it was imputed. It was accounted for him as righteousness. And he became the friend of God. Oh, the greatest title you could ever have is to be God's friend. The greatest place you could ever climb, the greatest status you could ever have in life, in church, in business, or in the world is to be called a friend of God. More important than having your name in lights, more important than having your name heralded across the world is to just be friends with God. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When my mother and my father forsook me, that's when the Lord took me up. I've never been alone even when I've been alone because he was always with me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever mm. Abraham God said to him Abraham I need you to move he says get your wife and move I'm going to take you someplace called Canaan and and keep walking Till I tell you to stop. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I need better details than that. <laughs> Y'all not going to talk to me. You're going to leave me out here all by myself. <laughs> I, I'm the, am I the only one that when Siri or whoever that is, is giving me instructions of driving? <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? What her name is? I think we need a black Siri. <laughs> I, I need Somebody needs to write yeah. Apple. We need Serena. <laughs> <laughs> Serena be like, take a left. Take a left. I told you to take a left, fool. <laughs> Recalculating. <laughs> Series on nice. Serena would have more attitude. I know I'm the only one in the building that's ever said, okay, because when you get directions, they just tell you the next thing to do. But I don't want to just know the next thing to do. I want to do the, ne the next thing and then the thing after that so I can prepare for if I got to take a left, when you have to write. Have you ever talked back to GPS and said, what next do I need to do? And GPS just says, nothing. God is worse. God says, start walking. <laughs> walking left, walking right. <laughs> Do I stop at the tree? Just keep walking. I will tell you when you get there. If you live your life needing God to give you absolute direction, I'm telling you the truth. I've been long, I've been saved for a long time. I've been walking with the Lord all the days of my life. And I found out that he just gives you just enough, just enough information so that you have to walk by faith and not by sight. He, he, won't, he won't tell you everything, but he, he tells you enough to keep hope alive in your heart because hope is more necessary than oxygen to the heart of a believer. And so he'll give you just enough, just enough, just enough information. Because if he gave you too much information, you'd mess it up. He just gives you enough just to walk with him by faith. He says to Abraham, leave your house, leave your mama, leave your daddy, leave your crazy family. Take your wife and I'm going to show you a place I'll give to you. And Abraham believes God. He believes a, a God that was not his daddy's God. He believes a God that he had an encounter with. This is not the moon God that the Arab, the Chaldees served. This is the Elohistic God. This is the Yahwahistic God. This is El Shaddai. 
and this is Jehovah Jireh and this is Jehovah Sidkenu this is a different kind of God he, he says he says I'm not limited to the moon or to the sun I'm not limited to the waters or to the mountain or to the valleys he said don't worship me like they worship those things those are the things that I made they are the figments of my imagination and the creation of my own hand he says to Abraham leave everything you know and follow me and Abraham believes God hmm. you're not really a believer until you've walked away from some people oh we gonna fight now there are some people that need to be removed from your phone. There are some people that are dragging you down and keeping you from the height that God has for you to go. And certainly once you get mature, you can come back and get them. But right now, you might need to walk away to walk into the fullness of what God has for you. Because there's some things that will not break until you walk away from them and say, I'm sorry, God has too much for me, for me to live like this another day. You cannot fly with eagles as long as you're scratching with chickens it's time to go higher somebody say amen you're not a believer till you can walk away you're not a believer till you say I love God too much to compromise in this relationship I, I love God too much to act like I don't love him when I'm with you. And I can't sit with you at church anymore because I really want to worship God and you just want to talk. And so I'm going to move to the front. You can get to the back or you can get to the left, to the left. You, 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 you. Because I refuse to live my life tethered, locked up, chained to somebody who's going nowhere when God wants me to go somewhere. You're not really a believer until you said, for God I live and for God I die. And I'm willing to lay my life down. I'm willing to lay my agenda down. I'm willing to lay my hopes down. Why? Because the hope that he has for me is greater than what I could ever dream. Abraham walks away. He's there. I'm done. He's there for 10 years. What does it mean when the preacher closes a Bible? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but I'll be good. We're on TV. <laughs> He's there for 10 years. I'm in Genesis chapter number 15 now. He's there for 10 years. And he still has no child. God, you said if I leave, you're going to give me children and you're going to multiply me. You've changed my name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And, and Lord, you've given me all these promises. But 10 years later, I still have nothing. You're not a believer until you can believe, even though you don't see anything at all. Huh. A believer can see nothing and still believe. A believer can say, it looks like this ministry is not going to work. But I have a word from the Lord. And so I'm not leaving until I see what he said 
to me. A believer can be around their crazy family members and they're cursing God and acting crazy. But you've got a promise from the Lord. The Lord said he was going to save your daddy. The Lord said he was going to save your brother. The Lord said he was going to save your mother. And you're holding on and believing God for that even though you see nothing at all. You cannot walk on water until you can see no road and still step. You cannot do miracles until you see the miracle already done. A believer can believe. Ten years later, no baby, he's still believing no miracle no healing no breakthrough he's still believing away with this quick microwave christianity i'm looking for the crock pot christians who can say though he slay me yet will i serve him it may take longer but baby it's gonna taste a lot better because when you set her on fire it's got to go higher See? i see nothing but i still believe I feel nothing, but I still believe. The book said, by his stripes, I am healed. And I thank the doctor for his opinion, but the doctor is just practicing medicine. But my God is not practicing because my God, he is medicine. And if the word says I'm healed, then by his stripes, I am healed. See Let me finish. I gotta, I gotta get started. This. A believer having no evidence can still believe. Ten years, nothing. Ten years of nothing. And then God appears to him. And start saying, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> this is what's so crazy about God. <laughs> I don't see nothing. I don't feel nothing. But you keep telling me, I'm going to bless you. Nothing has changed. My bank account is still in the same place. And yet, you keep singing preacher after preacher and prophet after prophet and word after word and you're saying you're going to bless me? Yes. <laughs> in fact, the more ridiculous it sounds usually the more God it is. Because God never makes small promises because he is not a small God. My God is big. My God is bigger than any problem. He's bigger than any fear. My God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. He's not a man that he should rely. He's not a man that he should repent. If he says it, it's coming to pass. And when it gets darker, he just makes more promises. Why? Because to be his friend, you have to believe him. The qualification to being God's friend, God's dog, God's homie, if you will, is to believe him when he tells you something crazy. Hey Noah, what? 
need you to build a boat, man. <laughs> What's a boat? <laughs> Thank you, Bill Cosby. <laughs> it's gonna rain. What's rain? <laughs> How long gonna take me to build this thing? Oh, about 120 years. Can you? You can't even clean your room. He built one thing for 120 years without a tool. Without a blacker and decker, without Home Depot, without Lowe's. You are God's friend. Uh, hey, Joshua, what? We're going to take over Jericho. Cool. How are you going to do it? I need you to walk around it um, seven times. On the last day, on the last day, you are gonna yell at it. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Yeshua. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you sending angels to like knock? No, you're gonna, you're gonna walk around. <laughs> and the last day, have everybody yell at the same time and then the walls are going to come down <laughs> hey Peter what I'm out here on this water why don't you get out the boat man come on out here man Anybody here ever tried to walk on water? Oh, I'm not the only one. Every vacation, every vacation, I try it. I try it. You get up early in the morning before anyone is at the pool. Because if you do this with people around, they call the, they call the authorities. Um, <laughs> look to the left, look to the right. In the name of Jesus, I will now walk on water. I step out every time I speak in tongues. Blub, 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 blub. It hasn't worked yet. I'm still trying. Because I am a believer. <laughs> hey, Mary. Yes, sir. You're going to have a kid. Cool. How you gonna do that? <laughs> How's that supposed to happen? Uh, the, the Holy Ghost is gonna overshadow you. <laughs> Somebody better tell Joseph something. They better tell Joseph something. Go fast. <laughs> hey Jesus! These people are hungry. And it's like 5,000 men and their wives and their kids. They're all hungry. What y'all got? We have two fish and five pieces of bread. She's like, sit everybody down. <laughs> Arrange them in groups of 50. Give me a break. I would have been fired from the, the ministry team because I, they would have, I just, I, just, I quit. You are crazy. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to organize people in groups of 50 for five fish and for two fish and five loaves of bread? What are we going to do? Is it communion? What, what's the word? <laughs> See, to walk with him and be his friend, you have to be a believer. 
you have to believe that he can save everybody in your family. You, you, you have to believe that your town is getting ripe for revival. You, you have to believe that God is about to set your church on fire. You have to believe that God is about to do something in America and in the nations of the earth that is going to trouble hell and put heaven on notice. You have to believe that revival is coming to our world. If you believe it, say yeah. I'm done. Stand to your feet, I'm done. Stand to your feet, really. I'm really done. I think. Get everything out of your hands. Hands free. Unless you're recording. Hold on to the camera. Make this declaration with me. Say, I am, I am a, believer. a believer. I believe, I believe that, God that God is able, is able to, do to do exceeding, exceeding abundant, abundant, above, above what, could I could ask what I could ask or think. Now everything's out of your hands. I want you to do this. Do this. Do this exceedingly. Okay, you do. Just try it again. I'm going to say the word and the motion together. Two hands moving downward together. You're going to say exceedingly. But I'll, we'll do it together at the same time. One, two, three. Oh, you're awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Exceedingly. Do it again. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. You do it. You got to do it a little faster because when God gets you out of trouble, he does it with a quick, fast, in a hurry. It is a suddenly of God. It is a move of God. Here we go. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Now, can I show you abundantly? Okay, this is abundantly. It is. Now, when you do it, you need to hit somebody next to you because the blessing that God is going to give you is going to be bigger than what you can handle yourself. It's bigger than what you can do yourself. When he heals you, he doesn't just heal you. He makes you a healer. When he sets you free, he doesn't just set you free. He makes you a deliverer. When he revives you, he doesn't just revive you. He makes you a revivalist. Show you. Say it abundantly. abundantly. Uh, do it again. Abundantly. In my church. Abundantly. In my life. Abundantly. In my heart. Abundantly. In my gifting. Abundantly. In my finances. Abundantly. In my family. Abundantly. Somebody holler abundantly. Can I give you the last one? I'll take my seat. Somebody say above. above. Now when you do above, you have to push like you're pushing something off of you. Like you're pushing something out of your way. Like you're breaking every glass ceiling. Like you're breaking every limitation. Like you're breaking every generational curse. Like you're breaking every attack of the enemy. Because the blessing of God that is on your life is above only sin. Can we put it all together? Yeah. We're gonna do it all together. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Say, I am, I am a, believer. a believer. I believe, I believe that, God that God is moving in my life. say I am a believer and I'm believing that revival 
is coming into my nation, into my generation, into my family, and it's coming. Somebody say, I am a believer, and I believe that miracles are coming to my world. <laughs> and in spite of the naysayers, and in spite of the prognosticators of doom, in spite of all the negative voices that have spoken curses over this generation, I believe that God is raising up a generation of believers that will be the history makers, that will be the planet shakers, that will be the demon chasers, that will be the healers and the leaders and the educators and the politicians and the businessmen and the businesswomen. I believe that it's coming and it's going to be so suddenly it'll be all that we ask all that we think I believe because all God needs is one crazy young person who says I believe that you're able to do it in my life lift your hand right where you are thank you Jesus I believe you can do anything I believe I believe you can do anything exceedingly, abundantly. What you say? About all I can ask or think you can do anything. Oh, yeah. I believe that I the dead can rise. And I believe. That he can open blind eyes. I believe that he can save anyone. I believe there are miracles to come. I believe that the Son of God is alive and well and moving in the hearts of a generation. And I believe that it's coming just now <laughs> so here so real I believe that he's a healer I believe that he's a filler with the Holy Ghost I believe that he's a life changer. I believe that he still fixes hearts. I believe that he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. I, I believe that whatever you need is still found in the hem of his garment. And I believe that he's real, he's alive. And he's here tonight to save you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight, and we've been preaching about Jesus. But maybe you're here, maybe you're watching by television, streaming by internet, and you're you don't know him or perhaps you knew him but you walked away from him I came to tell you 
that though you walked from him, he never walked from you. He's been with you the whole time. And tonight, he set you up to step right in to a move of God. In Cleveland, Tennessee, the ramp has been erected so that you could go higher. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here and you're saying, Dr. Hill, Pastor Christopher, Chris, man, I need Jesus. I need the kind of Jesus that can take me as I am, but loves me too much to leave me as he found me. If you're here tonight and you need this Jesus, I would love to pray with you tonight to receive him as your Savior and Lord. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed and nobody looking around, if you're here tonight and you're saying, I need this Jesus to come into my heart and save me. I need this Jesus to erase the slate of my sin and give me another chance to live for him. If that's you tonight and you need this Jesus, would you slip your hand in the air right where you are right now? Hands going up everywhere. Hands going up everywhere. Hundreds and hundreds of hands. Hundreds and hundreds of young people and older people of every color, of every culture, of every nation and every creed that are saying no to hell and yes to heaven. And I see that hand. I see that hand, that hand. Yes, you in your living room. Yes, you in your hospital room. Yes, you in your jail cell. Yes, you. He'll reach. He'll save. He'll change. All you have to do hey. is be a believer. Would you repeat this prayer with me? Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for loving me I thank you for sending your son the Lord Jesus Christ who died on a cross just for me thank you for loving me thank you for dying for me say Lord you died for me I'll live for you all that I am and all that I have today I boldly decree that I am a believer in Jesus name amen I just want to pray for you father for every heart that said yes to you tonight for every spirit that stepped out on what they could not see and could not feel in faith believing you. I pray, Father, that you would wrap your arms of love around them, that you would support them as they walk through this life's journey. I pray, Father, that you would set them in and set them up with a Bible-believing church and they would grow in the things of God. I pray, Father, that as they reach out and contact that number, as they follow the instructions on their screen, Father, that they would walk from level to level and from faith to faith and that their tomorrow would be brighter than their yesterday because they're walking in the light of the Lord. I pray, Father, that for every decision that was made, Holy Ghost, seal it uh, so the devil can't steal it uh, in the name of Jesus make that decision so sure that hell is nervous right now and heaven is rejoicing right now because there is now thousands if not millions of believers being added to the kingdom of God and if you believe it somebody give God a praise right where you are Hey!